Ben Pierce of the Rosa Tracker. So many of you noticed that I've had fewer videos here recently. There's a reason for this. You see, about four months ago, this happened. Yeah, this is kind of rough. Um, the damage wasn't as bad as at least initially seemed. This happened on July 7th and as far as I can tell what happened was I was merging onto the freeway and I lost some traction. I had some tires that needed to be replaced but it didn't seem like they were that critical. I actually had some on order although I never actually had the order that called me. They were supposed to call me when they had the parts and they didn't. Still hasn't happened four months later but that's beside the point. Um, somehow, I think I tried to turn in a little too quickly. This was the first rain and it was a very hard rain after about a month of not having any. And all in all, I just started spinning out of control. As you can see in the video, I did a 180 degree flip. I hit the little concrete barrier. Some stuff came flying off of it. I then turned around to the right direction, pulled over to the side. I then proceeded to you know, call my insurance and get all of that stuff figured out, took some pictures and found that the car wasn't drivable, the rim had cracked and so we got it towed and all of that kind of fun stuff. That was the very beginning of what ended up being a very, very lengthy and complicated repair process. So I thought you guys might like to know how it is that you actually go about repairing a Tesla Model 3 if you have an accident because this was a royal pain. Now I want to say this, um, this whole all took place during the Delta wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's been a lot of businesses that haven't had enough labor to really do everything that they needed to do. And so as a result, a lot of things have happened that were a lot slower than they should have. You're going to hear me say some negative things about my insurance. I'm not going to tell you who it actually is because honestly, I think they're good insurance normally. It's just like everything else, they're strained under the stress of the COVID-19 pandemic and all of the resulting social implications that have happened as a result of said pandemic. But you're going to hear some pretty negative things about them. Anywho, um, the insurance gave me a rental car and the agreement that I have is they'll give a rental car if you cannot drive your vehicle or for whatever length of time that you cannot drive your vehicle. So looking at the damage, I didn't think it looked that horrible. And so, you know, I thought, hey, this is, you know, something totally doable. Well, it took them about two weeks to send an inspector and they didn't actually send an inspector. They just looked at the pictures I provided and they determined those were good enough. Um, there were some issues with the rental car because they didn't want to extend the rental car until they had the inspection done, but the inspection was literally holed up on their person, not mine. It all got worked out in the end, but it was a royal pain in the rear. I think that because it was a Tesla, you know, they wanted to have somebody who had some familiarity with Teslas, which caused them to do things that they normally wouldn't. In the meantime, I started looking around and there are four repair shops that are about an hour and a half away from my house that you can fix a Tesla at. Um, I just live in an area that is a, it's a good sized town, city really, but it's not huge and so they just didn't have a Tesla repair shop and I live in, a, in Alabama where you can't actually sell directly to the public so there are fewer EVs here in general. And Teslas are very specialized types of vehicles. Anyways, I reached out to a couple of them. I got a couple of quotes and I think they used those quotes to help determine how much they estimated the repair cost. As soon as they did that, that same day, I booked a repair car. Repair, um, it could only be done at about a month and a half out. Uh, I think the repair date was uh, starting on August 30th or something like that. So already a month and a half after the accident. I had the rental car, the insurance was fine. And honestly, any place that I had tried was gonna be pretty similar. So it was just gonna take a while to get the thing repaired. And I kind of realized that that may be the case. Well, the car, finally made it to the repair shop. There was some interesting little hiccups where 
I was thinking it needed to be there on the 31st. They were so swamped that they literally did not want it there before the 31st. And I actually, they even like tried to refuse the car, but I'm like, hey, I've had an appointment to have this thing fixed for a month and a half. It's driven 90 miles to get there. You can at least sit in your lot and they figured out a way to make it work. Uh, about a week later, they actually started to really look at it when they had the time and they, you know, started tallying it up. They had told me it was going to take about two weeks to get fixed. So, okay, fine. Towards the end of this time period, I asked them, hey, uh, can you give me an update on when the car is going to be finished? And they're like, whoa, 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 hang on a sec. We're still just figuring out how much damage is really done because they were able to actually look at it. And at the time, they estimated that the repair cost was going to be $39,000. Now, I have a Tesla Model 3. A Tesla Model 3, even in this crazy market that we're in right now, was worth at most $49,000 for the long range variant. Um, so the general rule of thumb is you take the value of the car, multiply it by 75%, and if the repair cost is greater than that, they're probably gonna consider it a total loss. I figured all of this out on September 9th, okay? these dates start to get pretty important. Well, I knew that it was going to take the insurance company a little while to work their way through because they hadn't even finalized the uh, repair costs by the time that this had been done. And, you know, they hadn't sent that to the insurance. They were being nice to me and gave me an early uh, version of it. But, you know, do the math. 75% of $49,000 is what, like $37,000? So it was already greater than that and they hadn't even been able to look at everything that they needed to without starting to really, really take things apart. So it was pretty obvious that it was gonna be considered a total loss at this point in time. So I started thinking, what are my options? And knowing that I had at least a week to figure things out, I took some time and the needs that I have now are a little bit less than the needs before. Before I was driving 50, almost 60 miles a day to get to and from work. And you know, those miles add up real fast and then EV was saving me a couple hundred dollars a month. So it was great in that sense. Right now, I probably only drive a couple hundred miles per week if that. I don't even have a fast charger installed in my house because I just don't need it. So I was sitting there thinking, do I really need this? And I started considering some of the options, but in the end, I decided that I still want an EV. I've always wanted one. And Teslas really are the only EVs that I trust to go long distance. So I decided that I was going to go ahead and do the same thing. I wanted to get a long range or the all wheel drive version. I was trying to decide brand new or used. In this crazy market, they're almost the same price. It's insane. In many instances, slightly used vehicles are more expensive. So I started, you know, really trying to figure this out and the insurance company was stalling, 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 which, okay, fine. But I was pretty sure that this was in fact the case. Well, a couple of weeks later on the 20th, so this is a week and a half after I'd realized it was totaled, I took a look on the Tesla website early in the morning and I looked at their inventory vehicles and they had a Model 3 all-wheel drive that was sold as brand new. So if there's any tax credits or whatever, I get the advantage of it being brand new. But it had about 3,000 miles because it was their demo vehicle. They were test driving it and whatnot. So it had been slightly used. They offered that at a slight discount. Uh, it's the color white, which was not exactly what I wanted. And it was at the closest Tesla shop to my house. All in all, that seemed like a big win. The deposit was $250 and I figured, well, the car is going to be considered a total. A brand new Tesla is actually selling for slightly cheaper than a used one because you can get the used ones faster. So I thought there's really no harm in this. I went ahead and put down the deposit and I figured yeah, it's a couple, 250 bucks. This may save me thousands of dollars and it's very, very likely it's considered a total loss. So I went ahead and 
book the vehicle even though I didn't have everything finalized. So I practically begged the insurance to let me know whether or not it was going to be considered a total loss by the end of that week and they couldn't. They actually sent in two different appraisers for whatever reason, they were just being really, really slow to get this figured out. But one of those appraisers I had talked to and he had, you know, confirmed my guess of roughly how much the car would be valued at. And so I said, okay, that's sounds good. Um, trying to convince myself whether or not to actually do this before the insurance had declared the total loss was pretty insane. Um, really, what it came down to is I went to Kelly Blue Book and I punched in the exact configuration for this brand new car and they said that it would have a resale value of like $55,000 a trade-in value. So if in theory, if I took it to a dealership, that's the price that I would get. And I was paying $50,000 for it. That seems like a no brainer. Worst case, I have a car that I have to sell that's worth $2,000 more than I'm paying for it. And so I went ahead and bought this car. So we made the drive up there, bought the car. And keep in mind, you know, there's not a service center here. So I had to drive an hour and a half. And now we're into this drive back uh, with my brand new car. I hit a very, very slightly rough patch on a highway. Not too bad, but it was a little rough patch. And then all of a sudden, all alarms are going off. Beep, 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 beep. Whoa, like, whoa, what happened? Um, what had happened, what the alarms, as you can see here, are basically I lost autopilot, which is really, really annoying to drive. I lost regenerative braking. I lost uh, traction control and emergency braking, all of this kind of stuff that's pretty important stuff. So I was like, I'm going to get... Well, first of all, I pulled off of the freeway in a couple of miles like I was going to anyways, and I had to use the actual friction brake, which is really annoying. Like, you get used to not using that. And having a Tesla completely coast is crazy. They coast fantastically well. Um, so you don't really slow down that much when you let go of the brake anyways. It's pretty amazing. So I did the two-fingered uh, reset where you pull both of the big buttons to reset it, see if that would do anything, and it didn't. I tried a hard reset, um, do a system power down through the, the security menu, and that didn't fix anything. So I'm like, okay, great. Um, I figured I'd get home, make a service appointment, and hopefully they could fix it through my house so I wouldn't have to drive up to there. So I went ahead, got all the way home, made the appointment. Uh, the appointment was a week and a half out on Monday. So then I'm continuing to wait for the insurance to finally decide that it's a total vehicle. Um, didn't hear anything from them until that same Monday that I took the car into the shop. They had determined that they needed it in the shop because they didn't quite know what was going on. It wasn't just a sensor or something like that that they could replace easily. Um, I had an appointment at 8.15 in the morning, so I drove up there. Because it's far enough away and I wasn't sure about traffic, I ended up getting there at like 7.30 and they had one of their fast but not supercharger stations that was just out there and there was nothing plugged into it. So I plugged the car into it, started to get some of the charge back uh, from this long trip. Um, when the shop opened, they took it in. They gave me a loaner vehicle. Uh, which was very similar to the one that I had had. And, you know, I took that back all the way to where I live, to work. And a couple of hours after that, then they had told me, hey, uh, it's really not the big deal. The alignment was out. Because this is brand new, we're going to call it good. Normally we would charge for the alignment, but because it's a brand new vehicle, they were going to give it to me for free, which was great. So then I had to figure out how to get back up to uh, Nashville to their service center. And yeah, that took some doing, but one of the really nice things with the Tesla service is you don't actually have to be there to meet with them. 
um, because the phone is the key, right? So I already had a key. They just locked the key in the car and they uh, set a pin to drive feature so that you couldn't just, you know, have your key or whatever and make it out. So I made it there, got uh, home, but I think I was at the shop at 8.30 at night. I plugged their loaner Tesla vehicle into the same exact spot that I had dropped off my previous vehicle, left it charging, dropped the key off, and made my way back home, and the vehicle worked great. Other thing had happened that same day with my car that was being fixed. I got an updated repair cost, and that cost that they said was uh, like 25000 or something like that that was not nearly enough to actually fix the vehicle according to the repair shop. So I was like, am I actually going to be stuck with two different Teslas? My wife was going to kill me if that was the case. And yeah, that was the one thing that she did not want to have happen. So I'm like, okay, um, what do I do now? Well, I talked to the repair shop and I called my insurance company. The insurance company, they basically said that uh, they had declared the vehicle a total loss the Friday before, but they were just getting the paperwork and this was just one piece of paperwork in that process. I was like, okay, fine. I had known that this was going to happen. So I had a day that the shop was open and I was available that I was able to drive up there and cleared out the car already. So, you know, they could take it whenever they finally got the paperwork. A couple of days later, they finally declared it a total loss and you know, I could start to move on with my life. That was great. The date that they declared the total loss was October 6th. So this was almost exactly three months after the original accident. Um, to get the paperwork all the way cleared through the system, because I still had a loan on it, it took a little bit of time. But uh, just a couple of days ago, they finally had everything that they needed and they have a check in the mail, which I should get here soon and be able to cash and be able to move this on with my life. Now, because interest rates are so low, I'm actually not going to apply that check directly to the new vehicle. I'm just going to keep paying off the loan and I'm going to put that money in the stock market because I have a feeling that I'll get a bigger bang for my buck by doing that than the very low interest rate that's below 2%. It's a very interesting time. Bottom line is, is owning a Tesla vehicle is fantastic. Repairing one, especially after a crash, is not so much. The Tesla service center is great. And a lot of insurance companies, I think, just don't really know what to do with Teslas yet, even though they're starting to become increasingly mainstream. How much then did my original Tesla Model 3 cost? And I'm only going to take into account the capital cost. I'm not going to include the insurance, the fuel, that kind of stuff. Well, the sticker price was $56,000. Um, I did end up adding in the full self-driving, which actually ended up being slightly profitable. The insurance company appraised the value of that as $2,500 roughly. I spent $2,000 for it. Uh, all in all, then fifty-eight thousand dollars plus the taxes. We'll we'll call it sixty thousand. It really wasn't quite that much, but it's pretty close to that. The insurance paid out at forty-nine thousand dollars and some change. You also take into account the tax credit that I received, which was seventy-five hundred dollars, and so that means effectively, I have received for the car fifty-six thousand dollars five hundred. And it was a little bit under 60000 So we'll say $3,000 roughly is how much it cost me to have a Tesla Model 3 for three years. And then you take into account that I drove 40,000 miles on it. And I figure for every 10,000 miles, I was saving approximately $1,000 in repair costs and in electricity. And I actually came out ahead. It basically was effectively $1,000 that I saved by owning a Tesla Model 3. And then that doesn't even take into account that if I had bought any other vehicle, the depreciation in that would have been pretty severe, to say the least. So all in all, 
it was a very great experience to have bought the Tesla Model 3. Now let's also compare that to the brand new one. Um, I don't have full self-driving. I wasn't able to convince myself to spend $10,000 for it. Uh, it turns out that when you buy it by default with a used one, or in this case, the inventory vehicle, they included full self-driving, but you could remove it and save yourself the full $10,000. And that's what I did. Um, I don't have the home link capability, so my garage doesn't open when I come or go. That was a fantastic feature, but it was occasionally a little bit finicky, so it's a small loss. And for the cost of a small remote garage opener that doesn't cost very much, it's not worth the $325 to have it installed, in my opinion. Um, I have a longer range, slightly. It's 350 miles versus the 200, 310 that the original one was rated at. Um, that had since degraded, so that's kind of nice. I have the brand new vehicle, which should last longer. It's uh, the pearl white color, which I'm not a huge fan of white vehicles, but okay, fine, we can live with that. And overall, it worked out pretty decently. There's some pros. I have the all-wheel drive, which probably would have avoided the accident, actually, if I'd had that. So all in all, it's a reasonable balance to uh, have made all of these changes. Um, it really kind of was a good time to get in an accident because the value of the vehicle is much, much greater. I was so grateful that I didn't hit any other vehicles when this happened. Um, just in case any of you are going to say this, I was not on autopilot. Autopilot might have actually done better than me on this, but I don't use autopilot when I'm merging into a lane. You just don't do that. Um, but yeah, there's a few minor things that, especially the ability to change lanes using the toggle. I wish that the basic autopilot would do that. It doesn't have to have the full navigate on autopilot experience, but changing lanes is great, but so be it. Overall, it's a great vehicle and I kind of lucked out with a lot of things. And quite frankly, I had no injuries worse than a little bit of whiplash from damage to the vehicle that was enough to total it. This was pretty scary. And, you know, I'm pretty grateful. I probably could have had a lot more damage if I hadn't been in Tesla. I don't really know if that was the case or not, but they are pretty safe vehicles overall. Thank you guys very much for everything. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care, guys.